Hi guys, this is Ashish Manglani and today I'll be discussing the solutions to the code for this round 814. So let's begin with problem A. So in problem A, Burenkia and Tonkia are playing a game and in the game there is a grid and there is a chip that is placed on the bottom uh, left corner of the grid indicated by this uh, green cell. And in one move, you can either move the chip up or you can move it to the right by an odd number of cells. Notice this odd number of cells. So, and you have to find the player that wins the game. And how did the player win the game? The player that is unable to move the chip by an odd number of cells uh, will actually lose the game. And you cannot move the chip out of the grid. So basically, uh, the thing is the number of, like the winning player actually depends on the parity of number of moves. For example, you can make three moves. So in that case, the player one makes a move. The player 2 makes a move, the player 1 makes a move again, the player 2 is unable to move, make a move. So the player 1 wins. And let's say the number of uh, moves were 4. So in that case, player 1 makes a move, player 2 makes a move, player 1 makes a move again, player 2 makes a move again and player 1, player one is unable to make a move, so player 2 wins. So the winner of the game is actually dependent on the parity of the number of moves that it takes to uh, take this chip to the upper right corner. And uh, like you, since you can uh, move the chip only to the right in one move or only to the up in one move, so the number of uh, moves that it takes to move the chip up and to move the chip right are actually independent and we can solve for them independently. So let's see how many moves it takes to move a chip uh, to the top. So let's say you are given n rows and you start from the first row and you have to make like and you have to move the chip to the nth row. So you have to cover up n minus 1 rows in between. And in each of the move, you are making an odd number of jump, like an odd jump, an odd jump. And let's uh, say that the number of moves that you make is x. Uh, like, let's say you took x moves to move the chip from uh, the cell number 1 to cell number n. And since the number of jumps can only be in the sizes of odd numbers, so uh, the first term denotes the jump that you took in each move and x denotes the number of moves that you did to reach the cell n. And this should actually be equal to n minus 1 because you are skipping n minus 1 cells in between. So let's see what is the parity of x. So if your n minus 1 is actually odd, so if your n minus 1 is actually odd, then your x has to be odd. Then your x has to be odd. Because an odd number when multiplied by an odd number gives an odd number. And similarly, if your n minus 1 is even, if your n minus 1 is even, then your x has to be even. Okay. So the number of moves that it takes like the parity of number of moves that it takes to move the chip from 1 to n is equal to the number of uh, like is equal to the parity of n minus 1 so this is like uh, like similar process will be for moving the chip from uh, like leftmost cell to the rightmost cell that is the number of like if m minus 1 is actually odd then it will take a m odd number of moves to move the chip to the rightmost cell and if m minus 1 is actually even, then it would take uh, even number of moves to move the chip to the uh, right. So this is the solution. Like we count the total parity of the number of moves. And if the parity is actually like if the parity is 0, that is the number of total moves is divisible by 2, then the second player wins the game. Otherwise, the first player wins the game. So how do I implement this? I take my input n and m. I initialize my answer as 0, like the zero answer corresponds to the total number of moves that I make. I do n minus minus m minus minus to take care of this n minus 1 and m minus 1. Then I check the parity of n. So if my n is even, I increment my answer by 2 because the answer actually doesn't even matter. The number of moves doesn't matter. All it matters is the parity of my answer. So if my n is even, I increment my answer by 2, otherwise I increment my answer by 1. And similarly, I do it for m. So if my m is even, I increment my answer by 2. Uh, otherwise, I increment my answer by 1. And finally, if the total number of moves is actually a multiple of 2, 
then the second player wins the game and second player here is Tonya because it's given over here that Burinkia makes the first move. So if the number of moves is divisible by 2, Tonya wins, otherwise Burinkia wins. So that's the solution for problem A. And let's move on to the problem B. So in problem B, uh, you are given uh, like two values, n and k, so where n is always even. So uh, n denotes the like you are given all the integers from 1 to n. So for example, if n is equal to 4, then you are given 4 integers, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And you have to pair them up uh, such that each number appears exactly in one pair. And like this expression is actually divisible by 4. So the expression is a plus k into b is divisible by 4. And you have been provided with this number n and k. And this a and b are the pairs that you select from those n numbers. And you have to pair all the n numbers like into n by two pairs such that each of the pair is independent. So this is actually a constructive problem. So if you see, so just a second. Okay. So uh, if you see this expression, a, uh, a plus k into b, a plus k into b. And we need to make it divisible by 4. Okay. So we need to make it divisible by 4. Model of 4 is equal to 0. So we can uh, try out the casework. So the casework is like you can see if the value of k is actually odd. If my value of k is actually odd, then what happens is that uh, like it's always wise to keep an odd number over here. Like if I keep an odd number in place of a, then odd plus odd would actually give me an even number. And it's always uh, better to pair this odd number with some even number. So for example, my value of n is 8. Then I have uh, 4 odd numbers from 1 to 8. Then I have 4 odd numbers from 1 to 8. And I have 4 even numbers from 1 to 8. So if I pair each of the odd number which are with an even number, then this uh, thing on the left hand side a plus k so if a is odd and k is odd this thing this thing actually becomes even and b is always even because i am pairing an even number with an odd number so if this thing is divisible by 2 this total sum is divisible by 2 and this thing is divisible by 2 and so then the product would be actually divisible by 4 and you would always have an answer so if k is odd you always have an answer let's see uh, what happens when k is even so k is even so in this case uh, what happens is that there are actually two cases so if your k is actually uh, divisible like if your k is actually divisible by 4 if your k is divisible by 4 if k mod 4 is equal to equal to 0 so this thing modulo 4 like then a modulo 4 then a modulo 4 would be actually equal to a plus 4 modulo 4 a plus 4 modulo 4 so adding k to this number doesn't really change the divisibility of the product by 4 so in that case you can directly eliminate for uh, this k because a mod 4 would actually be equal to a plus k mod 4 because k is divisible by 4 so in this case if k is actually a multiple of 4 then what you need is like for every pair your a into b should be divisible by 4 so if you need each of the pair to be uh, divisible by 4 itself and you know that you have n minus n by 2 odd numbers in the range of uh, 1 to n and n by 2 even numbers in the range of 1 to n so there is no other option than to pair an odd number with an even number because the product of two odd numbers can never be divisible by four because that would be odd so it's always better to pair an even number with an odd number so if you try to pair up an even number with an odd number then what you need is you need this even number to be completely divisible by four because this odd number is actually not, not divisible by 4. So you need a to be completely divisible by 4. But you know that there are only n by 4 numbers from 0 to n that can be divisible by 4. And you have only uh, and you need 
uh, n by 2 even numbers such that they are all divisible by 4. So this is not possible. So if k is if k is divisible by 4, then we do not have any answer. So you can like uh, repeat uh, what I said over here. Like you can repeat the video and you can try to understand what I just said. And let's see what if uh, n is what if k is actually even but is not divisible by 4. So in that case, uh, there is another constructive solution. So we know that there are n by 2 even numbers. There are n by 2 even numbers from 1 to n and n by 4 of them n by 4 of them are actually divisible by 4 n by 4 of them are divisible by 4 so these are divisible by 4 and the other one the other n by 4 are actually not divisible by 4 these are not divisible by 4 not divisible so uh, pardon me this is 4 okay so what happens is for the n by 4 numbers that are actually divisible by 4 you can keep them as the b uh, so your expression that was given was a plus k a plus k times b this thing should actually be divisible by 4 so if you keep this uh, if you keep this number that is divisible by 4 as your b then your expression would always be divisible by 4 because one of the numbers in the product is divisible by 4 and what if uh, your n by 4 like what if the number is even and not divisible by 4 so in that case you can take it as a, a. so what happens in this case is this number is even your a is even it's a multiple of 2 and your k is also even that is it is also a multiple of 2 so the sum of them would actually be a multiple of 4 so in that case this term would actually become divisible by 4 so that's the constructive solution so the final solution is like if uh, your k is uh, even so if k is even so for the even case your k is even and it's not a multiple 4 because if it's a multiple of 4 then there is no answer that i have explained above and if it is even and not a multiple of 4 then what you can do is you can follow a constructive solution for the n by 4 numbers that are divisible by 4 you can take that as b and for the remaining n by 4 numbers that are a multiple of 2 but not a multiple of 4 you can take them as a and to pair them up like these total up to n by 2 like we have used all the even numbers as of now and we can always pair them up with the remaining n by 2 odd numbers so i'll show you the code and it will become a bit clear from this so what i do is i take my input n and k and if my k is divisible by 4 then there is no solution otherwise if my k modulo 2 is 0 like if my k is uh, even number but it's not a multiple of 4 then there exists the answer i'll discuss this case later because there is an easy case for you so if my k is actually an odd number then there is always an answer and what you can do is like uh, i told you like you can pair any odd number with an even number and there will always be an answer because where would be so in that case what would happen is so if your uh, if your k is odd then if you take a as your odd number then this thing becomes even and a multiple of 2 and your b is anyway as a multiple of 2 so the whole product becomes a multiple of 4 so this is what i have done over here so if my k was actually odd then i take i and i plus 1 so order actually matters in this case the first number is actually a and the second number is actually b so uh, for a i am taking the all the odd elements um, and corresponding to them I'm um, taking the next even number to them. So from i equal to z 1 to i less than equal to n, i plus equal to 2, I take my odd number and I take the next even number. And let's see the case for uh, k is even but not a multiple of 4. So in this case also the answer exists. So I print a yes over there and I store all the odd numbers in one vector. So and I iterate all over all the even numbers as of now. So I told you if my number is actually divisible by 4 then I can take that as a b because uh, so if my 
if my number is actually divisible by 4 then I take, can take that as my p because then the product would always be a multiple of 4 and to pair that up I can use any of the odd numbers in the position of a. So this is what I am doing. I am taking the v dot back. I am taking the last element from my vector and I am pairing that up with my ith element uh, like i is a multiple of 4 and in the case of i is not a multiple of 4 but i is an even number then in that case I take my i as a and I pair that up with any odd number that is remaining in the vector. So what I told is that if my k is even and not a multiple of 4 and if my a is even and not a multiple of 4 but they both are uh, but since they both are even then this sum would actually become a multiple of 4 and so the expression would actually be a multiple of 4. So this is the constructive solution for it. Uh, you can go through uh, you can like you can go over the code once again uh, if you have any doubts and you can ask me in the comment section it's so let's move to problem c now so in this problem like there is a, a sporting tournament and people are arranged from the numbers 1 to n and and the like it's basically a queue so people are arranged in the queue from 1 to n and uh, you are given an array of n integers and the array is actually a permutation like it contains only the numbers it contains all the numbers from 1 to n so the array denotes the power of the ith participant so if the power of ith participant is greater than the power of jth participant then the ith participant wins the game and the jth participant loses the game so uh, what happens is that in every move like in every game the top two participants that are standing in the queue right now they fight over the tournament and the winning participant uh, goes back into the first position of the queue and the losing participant goes to the last position of the queue and you are given queue queries and the query you are given the number of the participant and you are given uh, integer k denoting uh, like in the first k rounds how many games did the ith participant win so let's see what the problem statement is uh, clearly so just a second so basically you are given some participants 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and each of them has some power a1 a2 and up to a6 so in this case uh, like the first two participants fight over each other and let's say the power of second participant was actually greater so in this case the second participant would uh, like stay in its own position and like that is the first as the first element of the queue itself but this first participant would actually move on to the last position would actually move on to the last position and this is what the array would look like after round one so after round one the player 2 has actually won a game and there are no other players that have won the game. So if you make a query for player 2 and say that the number of rounds elapsed is 1 then the answer for player 2 would be 1 because the player 2 has actually won uh, one game uh, in one round. So this is what you have to do like you have to tell the number of games won by the ith player up till k rounds. So one thing that you can see is that after a certain number of operation uh, they would the uh, like the position of players would actually like the position of first player would actually become fixed so what I mean by that is like suppose six rounds have passed so in this case uh, what happens is that the in the end the maximum the player with the maximum power would actually defeat all the players and once that player is fixed so let's say player fourth was the player with the highest power so what happens in the first round so player 2 defeats player 1 player 1 goes to uh, the back and let's say in second round player 2 again wins the game so player 3 gets eliminated and goes to uh, the back of the array so a3 uh, in the next round player 4 actually defeats player 2 so now player 2 actually gets eliminated and goes to the back of the array and since like player 4 is the strongest player of all of them so now he will defeat player 5th and player 6th so player 5th will actually go 
at the back of the array and player 6 would uh, follow him up. So after 4 operations we see that the first player of the queue gets fixed. So the remaining of the the remaining array would actually keep on cycling like uh, in the next round player 4 would again defeat player uh, 1 and player 1 would again go back and will defeat player 3 in the next round player 3 would be the one to follow up player 1 and will defeat player 2nd and player 5th and player 6th and so on so after certain number of rounds the position of the topmost player gets fixed to the front of the queue and and after these number of rounds the player 4th is actually will be the only player to win any of the round and the number of uh, games won by each of the other player would remain fixed so what you have to do is to find uh, like like you have to find the index like you have to find the first round that each of the player can win so for example uh, you are given you have to find the result of kth round so up till kth round how many games did the ith player win up till kth round how many games did the ith player win so if the ith player didn't win any game till kth round so if the ith player didn't win any game till the kth round then the answer for it would be zero and let's say the ith player uh, started winning some games because we see that there is actually a sequence of uh, rounds in which the ith player will, act, will actually uh, win the game so let's say what i mean by that is you are given this array 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so in this case the player 1 would actually compete with player 2 and if player 1 is actually able to win over player 2 then uh, the number of uh, wins for player 1 increases and let's repeat the same process again if player 1 is able to win over player 3 then the number of wins over of player 1 increases and once player 1 loses to any of the player once player 1 lo loses to any of the player like let's say player 1 loses to player 4 then the number of wins of player 1 actually gets fixed because now there is like since the winning player always gets to remain the at the uh, topmost element as the topmost element of the queue so the winning player would keep on winning and the losing player would keep on losing from the next round so the number of wins of the i of the ith player gets fixed as soon as he loses one of the game so what you can uh, do is for each of the player store the first game that he won so what I'm doing is like for each of the player store the first move that he won and to do that start iterating from the uh, top of the array so start iterating from the top of the array and you see like in the first round the player for player 1 and player 2 would compete over each other the player who actually won the game would get to stay at the front the player who lost the game would stay at the back and the number of his moves would remain fixed to 0 and similarly in the next round the winning player would actually fight with the uh, remaining player and if the winning player was like if the winning player of the first round was the winning player again then the first game that he won didn't change like uh, like he won like the first game that he won was in the round one so that's fixed but if uh, the player third actually won uh, the game like if the player third actually won the second round then this the player of the first round would actually go back and his number of moves would also remain fixed and the player third first victory would remain uh, like would get initialized as round two like it would turn out that the third player won the first game in the round two and it will keep on continuing like if the third player keeps on winning the game then his number of wins would actually increase and once the third player loses to any further player his number of moves would always uh, would again get fit get uh, fixed and this player would actually move to the last so this is what i have implemented in the code so i'll go through my code and i think it will be a bit clear after that so what i am doing is i am taking my input of n and q and for each of the player i am taking input of what the 
power of that corresponding pair is and i'm creating a map of integer comma integer and the map is those the position of the player with power i so i map my ai plus 1 with the position i plus 1 i declare a answer vector the answer vector corresponds to the first round that the player i i is 1 and i initialize it with 0 and now i initialize uh, my maximum value till now like the, i'm talking about the maximum value till now because the player that would win the ith game like let's say the player that won the fourth game would be the maximum player like the player with the maximum value among the first five entries the player to win the fourth game would be the uh, maximum uh, player among the first five entries like you can uh, see how that happens like in the first round the player like player 1 and 2 would compete the winner would actually compete with player 3 and the player like the winner of first three would then compete with the player fourth and so on in the round fourth the winner of the first four or uh, like winner of the first three rounds would actually compare with would compete with player five so after that the maximum of the first four or the player five would be the winner itself so after fourth round only the maximum uh, like the player with the maximum uh, power among the first five entries would be the winner of the fourth round so this is what i have implemented like initially the maximum element is the first element itself and in round 1 i have to compare the first uh, like the first maximum with the second like the with the power of the second player so i compare the current maximum with the power of the second player and i i initialize if this is the first round that this person is winning so if my answer vector contains minus 1 so minus 1 indicates that this is the first round that the person is winning then i initialize this uh, the answer to this corresponding person as i because i denoting that this is the first round that the person is winning so for example if uh, i equal to 1 so in this case the player 1 and player 2 would actually compete within themselves and if let's say the player 2 won then the answer corresponding to player 2 would get initialized by 1 so indicating that the first round that the player 2 won was actually won and i create this vector sorted so this sorted vector actually contains uh, the values of the uh, first round that each of the person wins so i'll explain why i have why have i done this thing so i i create this vector sorted and i insert all of the corresponding answers to like all of the answers corresponding to each of the player and i insert a very large number uh that is like since i have been given that my number of games is actually up till 10 to 10 to the power 9 so i answered a very large number 10 to the power 9 plus 1 so that can be the maximum number of games that the query can ask and i sort the sorted vector so i take my input vector like i take my input queries i take the index of the participant i take input as the number of games that have elapsed till now and if the answer corresponding to this person is actually minus 1 so this person hasn't won any game till now then the answer would be just zero for this person and what i'm doing right now i'll explain it to you so to calculate the number of wins of ith player up till kth game what we can do is that suppose what i have said is the ith player started winning like the first round that the ith player won is actually answer of i is actually answer of i and i say that this is the first round that the ith player won and k rounds have elapsed till now so how many wins did the ith player achieve would it be k minus answer of i plus 1 like for example uh, let's say the first round that the ith player won was round 3 ith player for i had played the first round that he won was round 3 and six rounds have elapsed till now so would the number of wins for i had player be 3 uh, 4 5 and 6 like would the number of wins be actually 4 6 minus 3 plus 1 or would it be not 
so it would actually be not. So, uh, this is the first round that the ith player has won, but we are not guaranteed that he keeps on winning up till the sixth round itself. So this is the number of rounds that have elapsed till now. And for the ith player, I want to find the maximum, like the last round that the ith player won. So to achieve that, what I do uh, is that I store each of uh, like I I find the upper bound of this uh, of the first round that the ith player won. So for example, let's say the fifth game. Let's say the fifth game was won by any other player. Uh, let's say the fifth game was won by player J. Then the streak of ith player actually break at the fifth game. Like the ith player won game three, game four, but he lost game five. So the last round that he won was game four. So what is this entry five? This entry five is corresponding to the first game that the jth player won. So once the ith player starts losing the game, there would be uh, one entry corresponding to the uh, the next person, the very next person that starts winning the game when the ith person starts losing the game. So if the ith person starts losing losing the game, there would be a corresponding entry in the sorted vector that would correspond to the first game that the jth person, like the person that defeats the ith person, starts winning the game. So what I do is that I in each I do my k is equal to min of k, comma upper bound of like upper bound of uh, this value, like the like the answer of i. What is the answer of i? Answer of i corresponds to the first game that the ith player won, and I found and I want to find the upper bound of this value in my uh, sorted array. So why the upper bound? The upper bound would denote the position like the game number in which the new player becomes the next winner. So, so this is the uh, like the upper bound of this would actually give me the position when the winning player started changing after this answer of i and I need to subtract it by one because what I say is that let's say uh, the ith player let's say okay so let me say that one two three four five and six let's say my first player defeats my player second so the corresponding entry for player one would be minus one or minus two it would be uh, like for the first player it would be one indicating that the first round that the first player won was round one since the second person didn't win any round so the corresponding entry is minus one for the third person he again gets defeated by player one so the corresponding entry is minus one the fourth person actually defeats player one in round three. So in round three, the player fourth defeats the third, uh, like defeats the first person. So the corresponding entry for player four, player four would actually become three. So indicating that the player, the winning player actually changed in the third round. So the number of rounds that the first player won was actually, uh, like the last round that the first player won was actually two. Because from round 3, my 4th player is the new winner. So this is what I am doing. The last round that the player I won is actually the upper bound of this value in the my sorted array. Minus 1. Why minus 1? Because I uh, told you this is the new round that the uh, new winner won. So corresponding to that, the last round uh, that the ith player won would actually be 3 minus 1. That is the second round. So I take the upper bound of that and what why I do this minimum of k. So for example, the uh, like the first player keeps on winning t till the sixth round, but only four rounds have elapsed. So the last round that the player won has won till now is only four. So I take this k is equal to minimum of k comma upper bound of all the uh, values in my sorted array and minus one. So minus one corresponds to the last round that the ith player won. And what I do is that. I output the number of wins that this ith player has achieved. So the number of wins would be maximum of 0 because the wins cannot be negative and k minus answer of i plus 1. Why k minus answer of i plus 1? k is the last round that the ith person won. Answer of i is the first round that the ith person won. So the number of total wins would be k minus answer of i plus 1. So this is the solution for the c problem. So 
the implementation is again a bit involved you can ask me any doubts in the comment section itself so thank you for this